Hello kiddos, hope everyone is doing well. Um, I'm here to talk to you about emotion. So we just finished talking motivation. Um, emotion goes along with motivation. Uh, they got a lot of connections. Um, obviously our emotions can pull us in certain directions. We can be pushed, um, depends on incentives and things like that. So that's why we do these together. So let's uh, get started here. Uh, first of all, just some little intro to emotions here. Um, there's a lot going on here. A lot going on when it comes to your emotions. They're complex. Um, we usually learn them throughout life. Uh, there is some genetic influence also, so we got to keep that in mind. Um, Styles vary. Emotional styles vary for people. Women and men are different also. So a uh, lot, lot of stuff going on here. Um, the whole organism is affected here. You got the physiological arousal, which you'll hear about. Uh, so something inside of you happens, like your heart starts beating. Uh, you could have cognitive interpretation where you're using your mind uh, to think about the situation and think about how you feel. Uh, subjective feelings are always there. Uh, are you happy right then? Are you sad right then when stuff is happening? Uh, what about you come across something that made you sad in the past? Is it going to make you sad again because it was in the past? So a lot of subjective stuff going on there too. And then there's usually a behavioral expression, um, whether it's a smile, a frown, um, punching someone in the face if you're mad, kicking the wall. I don't know. So some, all of this stuff is going on here. Like I said, complex process involving a lot of stuff inside it. Uh, so we've got uh, a few theories that we need to know about in this class. First one is the James Lang theory. And I'm going to be using a car as an example. If a car is coming at you 80 miles per hour, you're probably going to be scared. Uh, so your heart will pound probably, and then you'll probably feel the emotion of fear. But how do we get there with these different theories? For James Lang theory, they say, so you see the car, and then your heart starts pounding, and then you feel the fear. All right, so the main thing to remember in this theory is arousal precedes emotion. You could also think about it like this, that box over there was smiling, enjoying, enjoying, smiling. Um, do we smile first and then feel joy, or do we feel joy and then we smile because we feel joy? It could happen both ways. Um, kind of your opinion how it happens. This is just a theory. So put a smile on your face and you'll feel happy, right? That's the James Lang theory. Ne Oop, wrong way. Next up, uh, Cannon Bard theory. So James Lang, arousal preceded emotion. This arousal and emotion is happening at the same time. All right, you can see the graphic there. Here comes the car, 80 miles per hour. Your heart pounds and you feel fear. Boom, right together. All right, um, so that's pretty easy. The third one is the two-factor theory, uh, called two-factor because they're adding something in here. Here comes a car, 80 miles per hour. You have the arousal, which we had before in the previous two theories, but now you will see here below the heart pounding, cognitive label. This is where this theory talks about your mind coming into it, where you actually think like, Obviously, it's going to be fast enough to be like, hold on, my heart's pounding, car coming at me, holy cow, this is a scary situation, I'm scared. There you go. Or maybe it's exciting. Maybe you want a car coming at you, so maybe you label it as excitement. Uh, so here's just a little graphic of the three main theories uh, that you can kind of, I don't know, if you want to get a visual, help you remember it. A couple other things when it comes to feeling these emotions, why we're feeling it. One other one you need to know about is Lazarus' concept of appraisal. So if you follow along here, here's the event down here in the bottom left. So you're going through situations, someone's yelling at you, the car's coming at you, right? You can either have an emotional response, but the thing added with Lazarus stuff is we also appraise the situation. So unlike the two-factor theory where you feel an arousal and then you think about it, this is saying you think about it first and then you have your response. All right, so he, Lazarus adds in the appraisal of it. Uh, let's 
let me look at this situation and see what's going on first. And then the last one uh, for how we feel emotions talks about the brain and a shortcut for emotions. So if you follow along with me here, here's our eyeballs. We see a snake, okay? Now, our vision always goes to the thalamus first, and then it goes to the visual cortex to process it, and then we understand what we saw. So that could be a, th a thing, like thalamus, visual cortex, oh, it's a snake, and then your amygdala, I'm scared, ah, okay. Well, we also have a shortcut, because sometimes you don't go through that whole process, we believe. Thalamus, then it goes straight to the amygdala, and you feel the fear. So that's what, so the yonk, the yonk? Uh, he's Polish. I'm, I have a hard time saying that name. Uh, that is what he talks about. So a quicker way. Take out kind of the thinking a little bit, the processing, and just go, boom, that's a snake. You're scared. Get out of there. All right. Unless you really like snakes. I don't like snakes. Uh, so all these theories have good things. All these theories have bad things. Uh, the theories of why we feel certain emotions and how it goes in our in our bodies. Um, there's so many of them. There's tons of them. Uh, these are the ones we need to know. Obviously, you, if you're interested in that, you can go check it out. Pretty in, uh, interesting stuff. So, like I said, it's a complex thing. Motivation, emotion, these things that we you can't touch. Um, they're not really physical things. It's hard to study. Um, the subjective part is also very important here. Um, Obviously, we don't all go through the same steps when feeling emotions uh, because we're going to bring in our past. We're going to bring in how we're feeling right then and there. Um, and obviously, we're all different, right? So what about the neuroscience? How about the brain? What's going on in the brain? The limbic system, the amygdala, remember that, fear, emotions. Uh, the reticular formation is involved in this with your alertness. The cerebral cortex, the wrinkly part of your brain, is definitely involved in this uh, with the thinking part. Um, emotions tend to bring multiple things together in association areas, and those are in the cortex. Um, there you go. guess I should have said that. Uh, the autonomic nervous system definitely plays a role uh, with um, your heart pounding, your pupils getting bigger, your palms getting sweaty if you're nervous, I don't know, whatever it may be. Um, and then we got the endocrine system, most importantly, glucocorticoids. This is a steroid in our body that um, helps with inflammation and uh, it does good things. And so when we're going through things uh, and feeling certain emotions, could be having a hard time on our bodies, these glucocorticoids can kick in and help us out a little bit. What about performance? What about performance? Any of y'all out there, you play sports, uh, you play an instrument, you perform something in front of an audience, well, not these days, uh, but maybe in the past, hopefully in the future, um, where do you want your arousal to be? Where do you want your emotions to be? If you're doing something that you know how to do and it's a simple task, you're probably going to be okay being uh, way up high with your arousal and you can be pumped up and psyched. But if you're doing something difficult, you kind of want to be calm and just chill so you can think better. Uh, Nonverbal behavior. So facial expressions, um, gestures, right? Uh, we have these all over the world. Sometimes they're universal. Sometimes they're not. I'm sure you know some examples. Uh, how certain hand gestures and stuff mean different things in different countries, different cultures. Uh, but it's very hard to hide your emotions. Um, if you really want to know how someone's feeling, you should study their face uh, and look at their facial expressions because it usually comes out. Your words can hide it, but your facial expressions is much harder to do. Uh, what about gender and emotion? Uh, of course, women and men are different when it comes to emotions. We express them differently. Um, we feel differently at times, at the same times. But uh, women, through research, shows that they're pretty much better when it comes to emotions than men. Uh, you guys can read 
emotions. Uh, read the room, right? Um, they're more sensitive than men, which is awesome. Uh, and empathy. So way to go, ladies. You guys are awesome. Um, facial expressions. Most of the time, these are universal. Um, like a smile is a smile. A frown is a frown, no matter where you go in the world. If you smile, people know that, hey, that person is happy, right? Uh, facial feedback was something that this guy did an experiment on. And if you do that, I got a frowny face. They ask questions. And then they ask the same question. I'm going, eh. Gives you a smile, right? Um, and depending on if you're frowning or smiling, you answer the question differently. So uh, facial feedback, is it if you smile, are you going to feel better? You know, um, Universal expressions, here they are right here. Happiness, anger, sadness, fear, surprise, disgust. Um, not everybody agrees on this, but usually um, we express these emotions the same no matter where you are world. Uh, here are your new universal emotions that we believe everybody in the world feels the same. Um, not at the same thing. We don't all feel joy at the same thing. But when we feel joy, it seems to be the same all around the world. Now, let's talk about something better. Uh, happiness. So people long time have been studying sadness, right? Depression, anxiety, stress, like all these bad things. What about the happy people. How do we get happy? All right. And how do we measure that? That's a tough thing to measure. Um, so a couple things when it comes to being happy and feeling good, uh, feel good, do good phenomenon, which is when you're in a good mood, you're more likely to help people. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, but happiness is tough because it's very subjective. Um, you might be happy with your life, but the next person has your same life and what you have and, and same job and stuff, but they might not be happy at all. All right. So it's very subjective. Um, economic indicators can play a role in happiness for sure. Um, they've looked into that physical, whether, you know, being in shape, overweight, uh, tall, short, I don't know, whatever it may be. So a lot of things come into play through this research we find out when it comes to happiness. So how are we going to measure happiness? Uh, if you remember availability heuristic, that was a term in our cognition unit, that we use what's most readily available in our memory. And if I just failed tests, that's definitely, like, I'm sad. If someone asks you, like, hey, are you happy or sad right now? You might say I'm sad. But you might actually be happy in your life. But in that moment, because you failed the test, you're going to say you're sad. So that's kind of what that means with the availability heuristics. Um, people ask, is happiness a trait or is it a state? Like, are you a happy person or are you just happy right now? Good question. Relative deprivation. Uh, we usually compare ourselves, especially with social media and stuff. You know, we put the best of our lives on social media and then we compare our whole entire lives to our friends on Instagram, but that's only their best life. So um, that's something to stay away from probably. Adaptation level. You know, if you want $100,000, when you get that $100,000, you're going to be happy for a, a little bit, but then you're going to get used to it and be like, man, I need more money. I want $200,000 because there's always somebody with more money and you always want more things and you just keep going and that's a tough thing to be. So say all that, say happiness is a tough one um, to study. And, but obviously I hope all you are happy. <laughs> Who are the happy people? Ooh, here you go. High self-esteem, optimistic, way to go. Good close friendships, that's awesome. Sleeping well, you guys probably don't sleep enough. Uh, what's not related, there you go. Okay, uh, I'm going to wrap it up there. There's emotions. There's going to be one more coming on stress. Um, short one, though. All right. Love y'all.